physiology lecture today we are going to cover the gastrointestinal hormones of GIT so in this series GI hormones divided into three big families the first one is gastrin family first one is gastrin family second one is secretin family and the third one is other polypeptides in which motilin guanilin etc enzymes are uh, hormones are secreted so all of these hormones are secreted from entero endocrine cells of gid now this is the part one the gastrin hormone so first of all this gastrin hormone this gastrin hormone is basically secreted from g cells of stomach these g cells gastrin secreting cells basically located at the base of the gastric glands and the maximum number of these g cells present in pylori glands this is also known as amine up precursor uptake and decarboxylation so basically this is responsible for this uptake and decarboxylation carboxylation so that's why it's also known as a pud type of cells the another feature of these g cells that it is a flask called the conical shape and the conical part or the apex part effect project towards the stomach lumen with broad base and it contains many gastrin granules so when there is a stimulation these gastric granules release gastrin hormone into the blood circulation now come to the next part that is the type of gastrin so gastrin secreted in an inactive form that is the progastrin and in the presence of hcl and the product of digestion it convert into active form this is gastrin this is active form and this is inactive form according to the sequence or the nature of amino acids the gastrin is further divided into three parts this is depending upon the basically number of amino acids first one is g34 g17 g14 in which this g17 is basically is the principal form so this is the principal form when we goes to know that the half life of this principal form is only 2 to 3 minutes in the blood circulation and it get activated mainly in kidney and in small intestine now other type of gastrin are also released that is known as mini gastrin or mega gastrin mini gastrin is a c tetrapeptide carboxyl terminal tetrapeptide and mega gastrin contains 45 amino acids the major role of mini gastrin and mega gastrin is still unknown but the principal form of gastrin is g17 now the functions of gastrin the main important function is to stimulate the hcl secretion this bind with the cholecystokinin beta gastrin receptors present on the parietal cells so the gastrin when released from g cells enter into the circulation and then bind cholecystokinin beta gastrin receptor that is present in parietal cells act to open the calcium channels and release this calcium channels from intracellular stores and along with the second messenger cyclic amp via protein kinase it able to increase the transport of h plus ion into the gastric lumen by acting on hydrogen potassium atpase pump and this pump moves h plus ion into the lumen and potassium ion into the cell this is the parietal cell and this is the lumen and in lumen in lumen this h plus ion then joins with the chloride ion and finally form hcl the another important function of gastrin so is basically to make the secretion of histamine and this histamine is released from anti-chromophil like cells this is known as ecl cells and this increase the secretion of hcl so histamine is basically an important feature 
an important substance that increase the release of hcl secretion other important gastrin functions that is also i think important fact that it also increase the gastric and intestinal motility the motility is basically related to the propulsion of food into the forward direction increase in pancreatic secretion in of insulin and glucagon the trophic action of this pancreatic uh, gastrin is basically necessary for the growth of the gastrointestinal mucosa and intestinal mucosa basically so this is how the gastrin used to stimulate the potassium hydrogen potassium atpase pump hydrogen potassium atpase pump this gastrin act on the cholecystokinin beta gastrin receptors on parietal cells this is the parietal cell and the vagal stimulation due to the distension of the food that enter into the stomach causes a release of acetylcholine which act on muscarinic 3 type of receptor this muscarinic 3 type of receptor increase the calcium ion concentration which act on this protein kinase as a second messenger and this act on hydrogen potassium atpase pump to release more h plus ion into the lumen of stomach likewise it this gastrin increase the inositol type phosphate and finally increase the concentration of calcium ion this would happen to increase protein kinase c activity and this also increase the h plus ion secretion into the lumen of stomach now factors affecting the gastrin secretion so some factors always increase the gastrin some factors in always decrease the gastrin so these are the stimulatory factors these are the decreasing factors vagal stimulation vagal stimulation cause increase in gastrin releasing peptide and this gastrin releasing peptide directly increase the secretion of gastrin due to the distension of the pyloric antrum as the food enter into the stomach and reach up to the pyloric antrum part this part get it distended and due to the distension there is a stimulation of g cells occur which enable to respond to release more gastrin into the through the enteric nervous system into the blood stream and through the arterial circulation it reach to the parietal cell and finally increase the activity of hydrogen potassium atpase pump now another stimulatory factor product of protein digestion like peptides amino acids alcohol or coffee when all these products present in a stomach in more amount there is more release of gastrin secretion other important factors that is calcium or epinephrine also having the influencing effect to increase gastrin secretion factors that decrease gastric secretion when there is already low ph of gastric juice less than 3 so there is no more requirement for release of gastrin so this is via the negative feedback mechanism as it happens like that already minus already hcl ph is less than 3 so this highly acidic medium inhibit g cells to release decrease release of gastrin from g cells next is somatostatin this somatostatin is basically released by the d cells located adjacent to g cells and the parietal cells so somatostatin is already an inhibitory effect it's a inhibitory hormone other horror substances that decrease the secretion of gastrin is secretin this is the hormone that released from the s cells from the duodenum the another is gastrin inhibitory peptide vasoactive intestinal peptide glucagon calcitonin in response to already increase in the concentration of hcl and in response to already increase in the secretion of more glucose concentration this finally decrease the concentration of release of more gastrin into the circulation now this is how, how the whole procedure take place these are the inhibitory factors and these are the stimulatory factors 
when gastrin act on this cholecystokinin beta gastrin receptors form diacyl glycerol and inositol triphosphate this cause in more release of calcium ion from internal stores activate protein kinase c and increase the activity of hydrogen potassium atps form and finally release more hcl into the lumen there is acetylcholine which act on the muscarinic 3 receptors causes more in release of calcium which act on protein kinase c and finally increase the activity of hydrogen potassium atps form to release more h plus ion into the lumen likewise that ecl and erythromycin like cells release more histamine and this histamine act on h2 receptors on parietal cells this cause activation of atp to cyclic amp and this cause increase in protein kinase c activity finally increase in hps h plus secretion so these all are the excitatory but these are the inhibitory factors like somatostatin this somatostatin prostaglandin egf that is epidermal growth factor and tgf that is transforming growth factor in parietal cells they act on gastric inhibitory cells and finally decrease the activity of cyclic amp and finally decrease the secretion of gastric and decrease the secretion of h plus ion into the lumen how this works somatostatin prostaglandin epidermal growth factor transforming growth factor they all act as endogenous antagonist to the hcl secretion antagonist matlab to decrease having negative effect and finally inhibit the adenyl cyclase and decrease the secretion of hcl now come to the next part that is the regulation of gastrin secretion via flow chart so any stimulus that is food that is present in stomach cause distension of gastric products of protein digestion like peptides or amino acids vagal stimulation non cholinergic basically non cholinergic it means the neurotransmitter transmitter is not acetylcholine it is gastrin releasing peptide so all of these act on the g cell stomach secretion of gastrin occur parietal this gastrin act on then goes into the circulation It, circulation means blood from arterial blood they reach to the parietal cells of stomach and finally release more hcl secretion and when there is already more hcl secretion is there so finally acidic duodenum is there chyme secret hormones and highly acidic content this causes auto regulation due to low ph this low ph already can present in stomach inhibit the g cells that it they don't know more release of gastrin from the g cells and this is known as negative feedback inhibition and this acidic duodenal content then this acidic chyme enter into the duodenum the intestinal hormones stimulate to release cells it stimulate vasointestinal peptide gastrin inhibitory peptide somatostatin secretin glucagon and finally they act on either by g cells or either by parietal cells and decrease secretion of hcl or via decrease secretion of gastrin now this is the applied aspect that is gastrinoma noma means tumor it's a neuroendocrine type of tumor produce more gastrin so tumor causes severe and chronic hypergastrinemia it means the con concentration of gastrin is increase in blood this causes severe peptic ulcer disease and this condition is known as zollinger ellison syndrome so gastrinoma cancerous condition produce more gastrin that is cause peptic also and the severe case of this is known as zollinger ellison syndrome and they characterized by abdominal pain diarrhea gastroesophageal reflux so thank you all of you for watching the video hope you like that 
प्लीज़ लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब विश ऑल द बेस्ट